Right, good morning, students. Right, this is our first lesson in factorization. So as we look to the right, you see the topic. Topic is algebra, subtopic factorization. Objective, define factorization. Factorize by using distributive law and HCF. All right, so below that, you see we have a definition for factorization. The factorization, we factorize an algebraic expression by expressing them as the product of some of their factors. When we use distributive law to insert brackets in an expression, we are said to be factorizing. So thus, AX plus BX is equal to bracket A plus B close bracket X, which is also equal to X open bracket A plus B close bracket, where X and A plus B are said to be factors of AX plus BX. That's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. So let's look at example one. So we can expound on what we, what we just said in in that so example A. Okay, so that is the example. So the first thing we need to do is to find what is common between these two numbers. And it is very evident that one is common between, um, five is common between those two numbers. So we're going to do it the long way first, then we we start to do it the sharp way so you can get an understanding and see the distributive law and, and the full understanding of what is taking place. All right, so the first thing we want to find is what is common and we establish that is five. All right? So then we want to find the inverse of five. What is the inverse of five? Uh, the reciprocal of five. That is the number when multiply by five give you one. And the only number that can do that is, the, is what we call the reciprocal, and that is one, one upon five. So the one upon any number, any whole number is the reciprocal of the number, right? So that will equal to one, right? So that is what we're going to use to multiply these two numbers to insert the bracket. So this is going to become now one upon five. Put my bracket. Five X plus All right, so so we're going to use what outside the bracket to multiply by every member, but because we are inversing, we don't remove the bracket because I have, we have the bracket, right? So this is going to become now open bracket five x upon five. When you multiply that by five, we get that plus five y upon five. Close bracket, and we can put back our original five out here because we're not moving it because it is what we're taking out. So this is going to cancel this into this goes one time that into that one, that in that one, that into that one. So what is left is x plus y. So we, let's write that five. x plus y. 
And that would have satisfied the expression. And, that, and as I said, this is the long way. So we're not going to do all of them this long way. But just to understand that we use distributive law to insert bracket. This is what we meant when we said distributive law. But the short way, we can do most of this by head knowledge. So let's look at number two example, uh, um, B. Let's look at B. So we can understand the short way how to do it. So this is going to become 64. A square minus eight A. All right. So what we could just basically do find the factor of these two numbers, just put it outside, and just divide two both numbers, which is the same thing as multiply by the reciprocal. Right. So. Let's see really that little line I made. So let's do that. So what is common between these two numbers? You recognize that A is common to A squared, and 8 is also common to 64. So we can take out 8A out of it. Open bracket. So 8a into 64a square will leave 8a squared. 8, 8 and 64. If you divide 8 by 64, you get back 8. a into a square leave a. So that will become a, 8a. All right. Any number divided by itself is 1. So 8a divided by 8a leave 1. And that would have basically factorize it so you see how easy it is instead of going through this long process so this is the method we expect you to use to factorize you don't have to go through the long process that is just for learning purpose they can if you want to do it that way you can do it but get knowledge all right so let's look at c that's 25 x minus 10 all right so what is common between these two number and that would be obviously five so we take all five so open bracket five into 25 goes 5x time. Minus 5 into 10 goes 2 time. And that's how you would simplify that. All right, so B. Uh, what we are seeing is called D. Let's write in D, the D. So that with minus forty nine p square plus seven p. All right, this one is very tricky. When we are factorizing two numbers, the first number is negative. It means that the factor that you're going to use has to be a negative factor. Once the first number, which is which is negative 49, is negative, then the then the factors you have to you have to use has to be a negative factor. Because in the bracket, you don't want the first number to be negative. All right, so what is common between these two numbers is negative seven. 7749, 7 and 7. P is also common. So the factor here would be negative 7. And we use negative 7, 7P. 
As we said, because the first number is negative. Once the first number is negative, the factor we're going to use has to be negative. All right, so we'll bracket. So negative 7p into negative 49p is equal to 7p. So negative times a negative gear positive. 7 into 49 goes 7. So that will be 7. And p into p square would leave p. All right, so negative times a positive equal a negative. Remember when you are dealing with opposite sign, right? When you are dividing by opposite sign, it's always negative. When when you divide when 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 you divide a number a negative number by a positive number, it becomes negative. That's what I should have said. I said seven p into seven p goes one time. All right, and that would have factorized that one. All right, let's look at E. Six negative sixty four X minus sixteen. All right, so look at this now. So what is common between these two numbers is the first number is negative, so we have a factor by a negative number. So that would be negative 8, 8864, and uh, 2, 8, and 16, so that's 8. So this is going to become negative 8, open bracket. They say 8 into 64 goes 8 times. So negative times negative, you have positive, it is going to become a positive here. Carry back over x. Negative times a negative give you a positive. Negative divided by a negative give you a positive. It is going to become positive 2. And that would have satisfied the max. Please remember your minus sign when you multiply a negative, when you divide a negative number by a negative number, it becomes a positive. If you get if you forget these rules, you're going to always get it wrong. You must know these rules by heart. All right, E, so we at F now. Let's write that W properly. All right, so what is common between these, you know, and this is supposed to be F. All right, so what is common between these three numbers? Uh, five, five is also common. Five is, can go into 10. It's the biggest number that can go into 10 and 15. We don't leave in a remainder. And W is also common. So you can take out 5W. Open bracket. There's a five would have canceled this five and the W would have canceled this. So what would have at the front here leave X? Right, five into ten goes two times. So I put back up plus two. 
W would have removed the W, but Y is left, so that will be 2Y. Minus 5 into 15 goes 3 times. Right? And that would also remove the W leaves Z. All right? And then we close bracket, so that would have satisfied the maths. That would have satisfied the maths. All right, so we have the next part of the question to determine the the HCF of each of the following sets of algebraic terms. And that's that is what we want to look at. Now this don't have any, this is not using values. So let's see if we can write the first one. D3, comma, dear, is going to become a K4, D2, C5, and D4. All right, if you look, if you want to find common factor of all these three numbers, A, B, and C is common. But you don't just want to use A, B, and C. That wouldn't be the highest common factor. You want the highest common factor of each. All right, so how, you, how can you find the highest common factor of these number? Is look on the biggest power they have. Look at A. Look at them individually. All the A's in the three columns. The smallest A is 2. That is the highest common factor. Is the highest common factor can go into all three. Because if A to the 3 power cannot go into A to the 2 power. So that can't be the highest common factor. A to the 4 power cannot go into A to the 3 power. So that cannot be the highest. So the highest common factor is always the lowest power. So the first one would be A to the 2, A to the 2. So they, they move on to the B. The B is also 2. The B is also 2. See there, the smallest B is 2. That is going to also be B2. And then C, what is the smallest C? Smallest C a three. C three. The smallest C is three. Let's write that C properly. Smallest C is 3. Let's look at it. C, C3, C4, and C5. There's no C2. So the smallest C3. So this would be the I, this number right here. And I just write is the highest common factor of all these three numbers. Right? That's how we, we, we work. We find the highest common factor in algebraic expression. 
All right? So that will be the highest common factor of that. All right, that, and that would be A. The number two will be B. X square Y fourth Z three Come on. One that is common factor B. Right, let's go back to A for a minute. If you know that this one has a D, it has a, for, for two of the expression, it has a D in it. D, D3 and D4. But we don't include it in the answer because it, the, the first expression don't have a D. So this, if I put a D here, the whole expression couldn't go into this first expression here. So it wouldn't, wouldn't be a factor of all three numbers, but it would be a factor of only these two. And it said there must be a factor of all three. So that's why the D, if you have any question about the D. So let's get back to the in question. Same principle, look for the smallest power of each one. And that would be the factor. So X, look at the X first, 2, 3, and 4. So the smallest power is 2. So that will be X2. All right, so go on the Y. You have Y2 as well. Smallest for y is two for y. And then the z, z3, z4, and z5. So it's z3. All right, so let's look at the next one. So this is going to become 10x to the third y2 I'm um, 15. X. Y third. Right, that's three properly. No, look so. Proper. All right, so let's work this out now. So what is common between the numbers is five. So this would be equal to five. The highest common factor 
have to take 5, 10, and 15 is 5. So the x is the smallest x is x, right? There's no power. So that is the highest common factor would be x. Right, the y, highest common y is 2. So that would be y2. So this would be the highest common factor of those three numbers. All right? All right, so this is basically the end of this lesson. Um, please subscribe to our window. And I hope you enjoyed the lesson. The next topic we're going to look at is factorize by grouping. And we're going to also look at the difference of two square. So just give the video a thumbs up. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.